Hi, everyone, and welcome to our monthly research briefing. I'm Vanessa Weisberg from the Celiac Program at Boston Children's Hospital. And this month, we're talking about a paper that we've had many comments on in our Celiac Kids Connection support group. This study looks at the safety of occasional gluten ingestion. As usual, we have our director of research, Dr. Jocelyn Sylvester, here to answer your questions about the paper. So Dr. Sylvester, let's jump right to the conclusion. A group of celiac patients on long-term gluten intake showed no significant clinical symptoms or small bowel damage. How should our viewers interpret this statement and in their own real lives? That's a great question. And I think like everything else, the details matter. So first off, these are adults and these were not people who were on a gluten unrestricted diet. These are people who are on a baseline gluten-free diet who are having intermittent intentional gluten exposure, uh, the frequency of which um, was about once a month or one, once a week. And so this is more than most accidental gluten exposures. We would strive to have them less than that. And I think that it's hard to know because this wasn't an experimental study. So we're relying on people to report what they ate. And there's a lot of estimating in terms of how much gluten there was. But I think the overall concept that small amounts of gluten may not elicit symptoms or mucosal damage is probably true. So you said that these were adults. Were there a lot of adults in this study or just a few? Yes, these were adults. There was nearly 1,400 in the study and only 8% reported occasional, which was defined as weekly or monthly gluten exposure. So we're really looking at only 100 patients. And do we have any idea how much gluten they were eating? So that's a great question. And I think the answer is, it's really hard to know how much gluten anybody is eating. But they did make some attempts to try and ask people what types of things they were eating, how often, and then work back to estimate the gluten. So they were estimating this to be a few hundred grams of gluten per year. So to put this in perspective, when we do a gluten challenge study for a clinical trial, we often use 10 grams of gluten a day. So over 10 days, that would be 100 grams. So the amount of gluten that these folks are getting is spread over 365 days, which is very different than getting it over a 10 or a 20 day period. Were any of these patients symptomatic? So most of them were not symptomatic at baseline and very few reported that they had any symptoms of their gluten exposure, which I can tell you anecdotally is one of the most common questions I get clinic is, do I really have celiac disease if I had gluten and I didn't have any symptoms? And I think the answer to that is, complicated and really something we need to understand more about. But it's fair to say that one's baseline level of gluten exposure in a gluten-free diet, which is not zero for pretty much everybody, um, affects the reactivity of the immune system to larger amounts of gluten, which is why responses to gluten may differ over time and serial responses over a short period may elicit more of a response than if they're more isolated in time. Got it. So do we have any idea why they were eating gluten? So uh, gluten tastes good. And <laughs> uh, gluten-free things, Italy is fantastic. This was the study done in Italy, which has fantastic uh, gluten-free food. But uh, people want to eat gluten. And I think that's another important take-home message from the study is that when we think about treatments for celiac disease, the treatments that allow ingestion of gluten definitely have a place. Um, and I'll note that many of the participants were consuming beer, um, which is a particularly difficult thing to make a, a gluten-free version of. So can we talk about how this relates to children? Should we be allowing them to eat regular pizza or a cupcake at a birthday party? So that's a great question. And I think that uh, as I tell my patients in clinic, children are really a special case because children are still growing, which means that even subtle changes that we might not see in the intestine may affect growth and absorption of nutrients and energy. So I recommend to my patients that they don't have any gluten on purpose, understanding that sometimes the best choice might be something that if there was a better choice, they wouldn't eat, but one has to make a choice from the options available. Um, and once children are finished growing, then I think that could potentially become a discussion, but usually by that point, gluten has been gone for so long that uh, patients aren't necessarily keen to put it back in. 
Great. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Sylvester, for taking the time to explain this paper to all of our patient families. We really hope that everyone enjoyed this briefing and we'll be back again next month.